All right, we should be good to go. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Cameron once again here at the Slant's office. We're going to run through how to get your Windows machine up and running for Python web development today. So hopefully everything goes well. Typically, Windows is a little harder to get set up than Mac is. So hopefully uh, we blow through this tutorial and it helps you all out. So you should see my screen in about one second. OK, there we go. Let me close down some of these. Uh, am I still in the meeting? Looks like I am. Okay, great. So uh, first things first, you should navigate to this link, which I will show right now. So you need to go to uh, this link right up here. Um, copy and paste it in here. You'll get to the readme. And we now have Mac OS right here. We're going to scroll all the way down. Um, we might end up breaking this out into three repos, but for right now we have it in two. So just scroll down. We need to refresh it. Yep. Okay. So just scroll down um, and you'll see Windows. So again, this is instructions that will only work for Windows 10. So please don't try it um, on your Mac and get confused. Um, we'll go over the table of contents real quick. So some of this won't make sense to start. Um, just trust me, as we go through, it should make more sense. And if you have any questions, just uh, leave them in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to the channel so you get the updates. I'm planning on doing a five-part series with uh, Recruiting Live later this in a few months. Um, so you're, we're going to learn to use the command prompt. If you watch the Mac video, we called it terminal over there. They're the same thing. We're going to install Python 2.7. We're going to install a text editor. Sublime is my favorite. So uh, since I'm doing the video, we're going to install Sublime. Uh, we're also going to install Git. We're going to register for a GitHub account. We're going to clone a repository. And we're going to start scraping. So at the end of today's lesson, your computer will be completely set up um, to start scraping. And you'll have some code on your computer to do it. Uh, and we should be able to do all of this in about 15 minutes. So the command prompt terminal is the best way to get your computer to do what you want. On Mac, it's called terminal. On Windows, it's called command prompt. They're the same thing. So to find the terminal, we're going to come down here into this little desktop button. We'll click it, and then we're just going to type command. And you should see command prompt open up. Here we go. So navigate desktop view tab, like I just said, search for command prompt. You're not going to want to, or you're going to want to keep this tab open, so don't lose it. For me on Mac with a Windows machine uh, as well, it's command tab that brings me up uh, all the different windows I have open. So command prompt is right here. Uh, we can easily get back over to it. So just keep that up in the background, uh, moving on. So Python might already be installed on your machine. To check this, we're gonna use a terminal um, or the command prompt, I'm sorry, I guess that's what I call it for this tutorial. So we're just gonna type Python into the command prompt and see if we get anything. So we just did that, and I have Python 2.7.1 installed. So I already have it. Oops. Um, if I can figure it out. Oops. There we go. Come on. Yep, yeah, there we go. Um, so I already have it installed. But if you don't have it installed, let's let's figure that out. So it doesn't respond in the way that I have listed right here by spitting out Python 2.7 something. Um, we're going to install Python with this link. Oop. That didn't work. Uh, it's this link right here, and I'll, I'll fix that before uh, so it's clickable. You're going to come down to this Windows 8 or x86-64 MSI installer, and we'll just click it. And it'll get downloaded on your machine right here, and then you'll click it again, and you'll open when done. I've already done this, so uh, I'm not actually going to do it. I'm going to pause it, but uh, your machine will pop up, and I've got instructions on what's going to happen. So the next thing you'll do is you'll see, uh, you'll see this window. So install for all users. Just click the next button. Uh, then you want to make sure you have all of these options installed. Or, I'm sorry, selected. So register all of these. And even down here, if you can scroll down, you see this little X. We'll make it bigger. This little X down here, add python.exe to path. You need to click that and 
Uh, I think it says install globally on machine or install locally. Just uh, either or will work. It doesn't really matter, but make sure you click that X. Moving on. So at that point, you've got Python installed and you can close out your command prompt and reopen it. I don't know exactly if you have to do this, but uh, I would suggest it just to try to minimize as many errors as you possibly can. Um, so you reopen command prompt and once again, type Python in and we have an interpreter, which uh, an interpreter is just this three, uh, one, or three errors right here. Uh, it just runs your Python code. You don't really need to understand that. Um, just trust me on that one. Um, another trick you might want to know is CLS clears your screen. So if your screen gets kind of overwhelmed, you can do that. Um, so one thing that's cool about Windows is you might notice that the Mac guide has a different step four. And on Mac, step four was where we installed pip. So luckily for you, pip auto installs with Python on Windows. And the next question is going to be, what is pip? PIP is a package manager for Python. So what that means is it uh, basically just makes everything uh, super easy. Come on. Uh, makes everything super easy for you uh, to install other software. Um, we'll run some PIP commands in a minute so you can understand that. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Sublime. So I believe I have open. I don't know. We'll just navigate over there. Sublime Text. Yep. Sublime Text 3. And then we're going to come to this. So we're, we're at sublimetext.com backslash three. We're going to click this Windows 64 bit. And once again, same thing we did with Python. Uh, it will download. You will click here. You'll open when done. Um, should be pretty self explanatory. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Git. Um, all right, I guess I should go back. Uh, after you've installed Sublime, you should be able to search your desktop and type in Sublime. Sublime Text 3, you can see that I have that installed. I can click that and it will open up my code for me, which is great. So moving on, step four, we're going to install Git. It's possible Git's already installed on your computer, so we're going to check that by going over to our command prompt. And what we're going to type is git dash dash version. And if you do that, you'll see git version 2 something. It doesn't really matter which one you have, just uh, make sure you do have one because it's going to be important for later. Um, if that doesn't work, we're going to go to the Git website, which included right here, and it'll also be clickable right here. I think this isn't, yeah, that's not going to work. So you click this, and it will automatically download this package right here. If it doesn't, um, just click the 64 bit for Windows setup, just so we can see. We'll do the same thing that we've done with Sublime and Python. Once it's done, open when done, click through all the options. Um, should automatically start, click through all the menus. The stock options are fine. You don't really need to play with those, so just click through. Um, and then after that, come back in here and type git dash dash version. And you should have it there if you don't uh, relaunch your command prompt. Some Windows machines are kind of weird about uh, registering when some software has been downloaded. So there we go. CLS to clear our screen out once again, and we have now installed git. Next, we're going to register for a GitHub account. Registering for a GitHub account is really useful. For the purpose of this video series, it will just make your life 100 times easier. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to GitHub. And let's see if, if that one worked. So if you already have an account, you'll see stuff like this. Um, if you don't, you'll land on this sign-up form. So just fill out your username, email, and password. Hit sign up, um, standard experience. GitHub, uh, for those that don't know, is a way to store code. So kind of like you would store code or you would store files with Google Drive or Dropbox. It also enables you to easily copy the code I write and run it the same way that I wrote it. So that's, that's the main reason why we're going to be using it. You could write your own code just copying mine. Um, but if you use GitHub, you're going to be able to install it the same way I have it installed and make sure that there's no errors. Make sure you choose the free account. Um, you're not going to need the paid version. The paid version is... Uh, really for people that are writing private software. So uh, the software I write for Glance is stored in a private repository. Um, but public is fine for what we're doing right now. To decline that and keep clicking through, I'll ask you some basic questions, which don't really matter. Um, just click through and get to your profile. 
the top right corner has an icon to click and a drop down menu to view your profile. So you can see right here, you would just click this little icon. Um, let's see if I can get back over to my GitHub account and I'll show you exactly. Yeah, so we click right here and then you see your profile. Yep, so that's that. Next, we're gonna clone a repository. So the next thing we need to do is we need to navigate back to our command prompt. And I will we'll switch into another directory real quick just to show you, but uh, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna type CD. That, that's gonna take us back to, well now it won't. I'll just do this. Reopen, get an error, that's usually what I like to do. So CD will take you back, <clears throat> It'll let you go into a directory. Um, so for our purposes, we're gonna go into uh, desktop directory. And I'll show this right here, desktop. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make, a oh, whoops. We're gonna make a directory, M-K-D-I-R, make directory called projects. Then we're gonna change into the projects directory. Okay, so now we've, CD into our desktop, change directory into our desktop. We've made a directory called projects and we've CD'd into projects. Next, we're gonna clone the repository. So find the little green clone or download button down here, click it, and we'll, should, yeah, we'll see this uh, little button right here. You can click this clipboard. Um, I will do that. So wanna grab the Sorcerers Who Code Scraping Tutorial by Glance. And we will come right here and we will copy that. So now we're gonna go back to over to our command prompt and we're gonna type one command, get clone. Then we're gonna paste in our link. We're gonna hit enter. So now we have source two code scraping tutorial now stored on this computer. And the way that you're gonna navigate into this directory is you're gonna type CD, you're gonna type S, and then you're just gonna hit tab and it'll open for you. So let me show you how that worked. Let's kill all these tabs, we don't really need them. All right, and go into Sublime. Oh, let's make this a little bigger, come on. So we go here, we're gonna open the folder and we'll go back. We stored this in our desktop. So let's make sure we find desktop right here. We don't need, oops. That's not working. Come on. Hmm. Weird. Uh, Come on, get me out of this folder. This PC, there we go. Yep, there we go. Okay, so sorry, that was a little bit of a delay. I got stuck in the desktop folder. Um, but we hit projects, and then we'll see sources we could. So get here, don't click in any farther. Stay out on the projects level, click here, and we're gonna select the folder to open the entire repository. Oops. Um, I've included all that direction. So we CD into desktop projects and then we CD into the sourcing directory. Um, we're gonna open it and here's a screenshot of how you would do it. Select folder, again, stay on the entire folder. Don't click into the code. Um, after that, you should be able to open up this readme and we see um, some high level directions of how you would get started. There's a YouTube video of the class I did last week, which will get you up and running on with this code pretty quickly. Uh, just to show it works, we'll run, we'll run one of them. Maybe basic scraper would be a good one. So we'll just type Python basic scraper dot pi. Make sure you, when you come into a project, that you always start at the README and you read the getting started and installation directions. Um, sometimes there's little errors in there that could really mess you up. But as you can see now, we've installed Python, we've installed Git, Sublime Text, learned how to use our terminal, and we've cloned code onto our local machine. Now we have run a request to scrape 
the website and returned information. So that's pretty much it for today's lesson. I'm really excited that I can start doing these and helping out. Um, if there's any problems with this or anyone's stuck, just let me know and I'm more than happy to help. Thanks everyone. Bye.